Hi, and welcome to the inaugural episode of A Chat With AI. In this episode, I meet with ChatGPT using the conversation mode, and it's been edited for your listening pleasure. We talk about VR, ethics, and even question the nature of reality, so buckle up, it could be a wild ride. All of the imagery you're about to see was AI generated. Some of it is truly stunning, and some of it, well, don't look at the hands, it's always the hands. Why not share your wonky AI art find from the video in the comments below. And without further ado, here's Chipko and ChatGPT on A Chat With AI. Hey, let's have a chat about what if the internet was developed in the 1950s? That's a fascinating idea. If the internet had been developed in the 1950s, things would be quite different. Back then, technology was more limited, so the internet might have started with simpler text-based systems. Imagine large, room-sized computers connecting with each other, exchanging basic information. This early start could have accelerated digital advancements. By the time the 60s and 70s rolled around, we might have seen more advanced personal computers and maybe even an early form of social media. How do you think society would have been impacted by an earlier introduction of the internet? Well, back then we had more uh, restrictive values from what it would seem. Um, women were more oppressed than they are in this current age and technology may have actually allowed more control uh, over people, but there was a general thirst for how life was gonna be made easier. So maybe considering that, what do you think would have changed? You're right about the social context. In the 1950s, with more restrictive values and different societal norms, the early internet could have had a significant impact on both control and liberation. For control, governments and organizations might have used the internet to monitor and influence public opinion more effectively. It could have become a powerful tool for propaganda or surveillance, especially during the Cold War era. On the flip side, the internet could have provided a platform for marginalized groups like women and minorities to connect and share ideas. This could have accelerated social movements, leading to earlier reforms in gender and racial equality. The thirst for making life easier might have fueled rapid technological innovations. Things like online shopping, remote work, and digital communication could have become commonplace much earlier potentially transforming the economy and daily life. Overall, the early internet in the 1950s would have been a double-edged sword, offering new forms of control and liberation. It's interesting to consider how this might have reshaped historical events. What do you think would have been the most significant change in a specific aspect like culture or politics? Well, the interesting thing is that uh, despite the uh, social norms of the 1950s, there was a huge deviation with the whole uh, hippie era of the 60s, that free summer of love uh, ideas and the rich ideas that came out of that, given the limited social platforms that people had at the time other than you know, newspapers and, and, and other uh, regulated forms of media. It could have been very interesting to see how that may have been a bigger catalyst to a more global movement. Absolutely, the juxtaposition between the conservative 1950s and the liberal swing of the 1960s, especially with the hippie movement, is intriguing. If the internet had been around, the cultural revolution of the 60s could have been even more profound. With an early internet, the ideas of the hippie movement, like peace, love, and anti-establishment sentiments, might have spread more rapidly and widely. The internet could have enabled a global conversation, connecting like-minded individuals across different countries and cultures. This could have led to a more synchronized worldwide movement for social change. Also, the counterculture's music, art, and literature would have found a broader audience online. Imagine iconic music from that era being shared digitally worldwide, influencing more people and possibly even affecting political situations in other countries. Moreover, the internet would have provided a platform for challenging traditional media narratives, offering alternative perspectives and encouraging more critical thinking among the public. This could have led to earlier and more significant changes in social norms, political structures, and even environmental awareness. The 60s, fueled by the internet, might have been a turning point in global consciousness, leading to earlier advancements in civil rights, environmental movements, and perhaps even international cooperation. 
It's it's fascinating to think about how an early internet could have turned the summer of love into a global phenomenon. How do you think governments might have reacted to this rapid spread of, of counterculture ideas? With shock. But I always find um, it's interesting that from the 60s, which was obviously the summer of love, uh, and the, the big remark cultural change, it was exactly 30 years or a generation to the 1990s, which itself saw more rave culture and again a, an ethos around connectedness and a better way of being. And so therefore, if we extrapolate that further, another 30 years or another generational gap brings us to the 2020s. So like in the 1990s, where the uh, dance music and rave culture, where people would go out and dance is similar to the summer of love with the music and the dancing. What we start finding is it's, it's early in the 2020s. I am wondering what you think might happen for the rest of this de uh, decade. Your observation about these generational shifts in culture is really insightful. Every 30 years or so, we seem to see a resurgence of a movement focused on connectedness, community, and a break from conventional norms. The 60s had the summer of love, the 90s brought rave culture, and now we're in the 2020s, waiting to see what this decade's cultural shift will be. Given the trends, the 2020s could bring a new form of social and cultural movement, possibly influenced by our current digital era. We might see a blend of virtual and real world experiences where technology plays a key role in connecting people and ideas. The movement could focus on global issues like climate change, social justice, or digital privacy, reflecting the concerns of today's society. It might also embrace the concept of global citizenship with people coming together from all over the world through digital platforms to create change. Additionally, the way we experience art and music might evolve. We could see new forms of digital art, immersive virtual concerts, and even AI-generated music becoming mainstream, offering new ways for people to connect and express themselves. With the challenges we've faced in recent years, like the pandemic and political upheavals, there's a growing desire for change and a better way of being. This could fuel a movement that's not just about celebration, like the 60s or 90s, but also about meaningful action and global unity. It's exciting to think about what this decade could bring. What are your thoughts on how these cultural shifts might manifest in the 2020s? Well, definitely uh, yourself. Uh, AI technology is one huge part to enable further uh, enrichment of technology. You're spot on. AI technology, like what powers our conversation right now, is playing a significant role in shaping the 2020s. It's not just about the technology itself, but how it's enabling new forms of interaction, creativity, and understanding. AI can help in personalizing education, making it more accessible and tailored to individual learning styles. It's also revolutionizing healthcare with AI-driven diagnostics and personalized treatment plans. AI also has the potential to revolutionize creativity. The creative domain is especially exciting. We're seeing AI in art, music, and literature, opening up new avenues for creativity and collaboration between humans and machines. This could lead to new art forms and cultural expressions that we haven't even imagined yet. Moreover, AI can play a role in addressing global challenges. It can help in climate modeling, analyzing social trends, and even managing complex systems like urban planning or global supply chains. Of course, with all this potential comes responsibility. There's a need to address ethical concerns like privacy, bias in AI, and ensuring these technologies are used for the benefit of society. So in the 2020s, we might see AI not just as a tool, but as a partner in creating a more connected, creative and sustainable world. It's an exciting time and the possibilities seem almost limitless. What are your thoughts on how we should navigate the challenges that come with such rapid technological advancement? Well, first, I wanted to remark on something you mentioned earlier, where perhaps uh, connecting the world in the generational thing that we were still talking about, the 60s, the 90s, the 2020s. What I'm noticing is people uh, opting to go and be represented by a digital avatar in a virtual space. Things like Second Life and other things um, have all tried to connect people together. And I think with AI, we can now say 
please make a world that is like this and the technology will be there to create that world. We then as humans and represented by whatever choosing of the digital avatar we, we want can then be represented in these worlds. And I think that's the remarked change perhaps of the 2020s that we will start to see this uh, move to an online everyone as equal um, world where people can freely communicate and and be represented how they want to feel represented and I think that's one of the biggest cultural changes. I'm already seeing the rise of pronouns to be um, references to people and it's more uh, accepting of everyone and their uniqueness. So this ultimate uniqueness would appear in the digital space, I think helped by the AI. Now the ethical thing is to make sure that it runs governed by the people for the people, and that is the biggest challenge. Your vision for the 2020s with a shift towards digital avatars and virtual worlds is indeed a compelling one. The idea of using AI to create diverse, inclusive virtual spaces where everyone is represented as they wish to be offers a lot of potential for social change and personal expression. Virtual worlds enhanced by AI could become spaces where traditional physical limitations don't apply. This allows for a unique form of equality and freedom. People can explore identities, interact without biases related to appearance or physical abilities, and connect with others on a purely intellectual or emotional level. The rise in awareness and acceptance of diverse pronouns and identities in the physical world is mirrored in these virtual spaces. Here, people can choose how they present themselves fostering a culture of inclusivity and understanding. However, as you rightly point out, the ethical governance of these spaces is crucial. It's important that these virtual worlds are designed to be safe, inclusive, and respectful of individual privacy and rights. There's also the challenge of ensuring that the benefits of these technologies are accessible to all, not just a privileged few. The role of AI in creating and managing these spaces is key. AI can help in moderating content, ensuring accessibility, and even in designing environments that adapt to the needs and preferences of users. Looking forward, the 2020s could indeed be marked by a major cultural shift towards these AI-enhanced virtual spaces, redefining how we interact, work, and express ourselves. This could be a significant step towards a more connected, empathetic and understanding global community. What are some specific aspects of these virtual worlds that you think will be most impactful or interesting to see develop? I think the creativity, um, much like in the 60s with the, uh, the, the, the change to more colorful patterns and designs and music and hairstyles. And just like in the 1990s, it was a shift to more uh, rave induced lights and lasers and the clothing and the uh, social influences from TV, whatever media, that was all brighter and more fresh, a new change. I think in the 2020s, it is now to just throw color and uh, artistic creativity, and that could mean anything. I think with the rise of memes and with the rise of, of so many uh, cultural things in the last decades, I think that we're going to see the sum total of that perhaps made with AI. I could walk down a street with AI pictures of cat, generated pictures of cat, and I, I'd love to play with them uh, to see how well you can make pictures of cats. For example, a cat repairing a bike. Now, a cat would never repair a bike in this known world, but that shift to something unique, fresh, and interesting is what I think will be the um, things to, to, to come to fruition. Here's a whimsical illustration of a cat repairing a bike, showcasing the kind of creativity and unique expression you're talking about. <laughs> Playful, colorful image represents the shift towards imaginative and unconventional ideas, much like the cultural shifts you described for the 60s and 90s. In the 2020s, as you suggest, we might see an explosion of this creative freedom fueled by AI and digital technologies. The boundaries of art and expression could be pushed to new limits, blending the real with the surreal, the conventional with the extraordinary. It's exciting to think about how this artistic explosion will influence fashion, architecture, entertainment, and even daily life. The possibilities are as limitless as the imagination, enhanced by the power of AI to bring even the most whimsical ideas to life. Looking at this image, what other kinds of creative expressions or unique scenarios 
do you think might become popular in this decade? You can check out the images in our conversation history. I'm thinking it's um, 3D spaces. The, the thing that's lacking at the moment is a representation of space. We can have two dimensional images, but the three dimensions is how we relate to this current world, even if we look at 2D objects in this 3D space. So I think when AI can start to produce 3D spaces uh, that we can access through VR or even through a 2D uh, screen, that's the key then to start exploring together, which then promotes the creativity within the workspace, sort of helping itself to grow. I think that's what I envisage the next steps in this evolution, and we are early in the 20s. Your vision of 3D spaces as the next frontier in digital creativity is both exciting and plausible. The evolution into 3D worlds represents a significant leap in how we experience and interact with digital content. With VR technology advancing rapidly, we're already starting to see glimpses of these immersive 3D environments. AI can play a crucial role in designing these spaces, making them more realistic, interactive, and responsive to users' needs and actions. This could transform numerous fields from entertainment and gaming to education and remote work. In these 3D worlds, creativity isn't just about observing, it's about experiencing and interacting. Artists and creators can build environments that are not just visually stunning, but also offer tactile and sensory experiences. This could lead to a new form of art that's not just seen, but lived. In a professional context, these spaces could revolutionize collaboration and innovation. Teams could work together in virtual environments that simulate real world conditions, or even create entirely new settings that enhance creativity and problem solving. Accessibility will be key in these developments. Making sure these technologies are affordable and easy to use will determine how widely they're adopted and how impactful they can be. As we progress through the 2020s, it will be fascinating to see how these 3D spaces evolve and how they reshape our interaction with the digital world. What are some specific applications or experiences in 3D spaces that you're most excited to see develop? The trouble is, uh we often struggle to get our idea across through language barriers or communication barriers. Now I'm quite lucky that I can generally talk and <laughs> keep on talking, but some people struggle. Imagine when we can interface with our brain and think the 3D space. Does that then not make it more like a dream if we are experiencing it in the sense of through our brain? Now that does then mean we have to look at the ethics behind that, but also question then what is real if what we're living in a an interfaced 3D um, environment with the same five senses that we are used to in the physical space, it's a question of what is actually real. Your idea of interfacing directly with the brain to create or experience 3D environments is truly at the cutting edge of technology and philosophy. It raises profound questions about reality, perception, and communication. If we could directly translate thoughts into 3D experiences, it would indeed be akin to living a dream. This would be a revolutionary way of overcoming communication barriers. People could share ideas, emotions, and experiences in a much more direct and unfiltered way than ever before. It could lead to deeper understanding and empathy as we'd literally be able to see others' perspectives. However, as you point out, this raises significant ethical considerations. Issues like privacy, consent, and the potential for misuse become even more critical when dealing with direct brain interfaces. There's also the philosophical question of what constitutes reality. If our experiences in these brain interface 3D environments are as rich and complex as those in the physical world, it challenges our traditional notions of what's real and what's virtual. The technology also poses potential risks to mental health and well being. Distinguishing between virtual and physical realities might become challenging, impacting how we interact with the world and each other. Despite these challenges, the potential benefits are immense especially in terms of breaking down communication barriers and fostering creativity. As we move further into the 2020s, it will be interesting to see how these technologies develop and how we address the ethical and philosophical questions they raise.
Thinking about these possibilities, how do you see society adapting to and managing these advancements in brain interface technology? Well, the first issue is society has to start realizing that science and technology and the advancement of science and technology is going to present the human race with so many ethical um, decisions to be made. Now, the whole th point of the science and technology is it's going to force the human race to have to confront these ethical issues. And I think this is but one. Now, the problem is that all capitalist driven advancement and progress, which most of the modern world is built from, is not, care uh, is not interested in ethics. It's more interested in profit. So how do we as a society shift from the uh, capitalist driven immoral to the ethical science advancement for the many, uh, not governed by whether it's profitable. I think it's a very marked point now where power um, is, is not necessarily compatible with ethics. And this is the struggle, like the modern Armageddon, if you will. Power and ethics are going to have to come to some happy medium, and perhaps in the 2030s or further, that's a problem for humanity to confront this, this problem. You've touched on a critical and complex issue, the intersection of ethics, science, technology, and capitalism. As technology advances at an unprecedented pace, ethical considerations often struggle to keep up, especially in a world where profit and competition drive innovation. One of the key challenges is fostering a societal shift towards valuing ethical considerations as much as, if not more than, profit and competition. Mm. This requires a collective effort from multiple fronts. One, public awareness and education. People need to be more informed about the potential impacts of new technologies. This awareness can drive public demand for more ethical practices in science and technology. Two, regulation and policy. Governments and international bodies play a crucial role in setting ethical standards for technological development. This involves creating regulations that ensure technologies are used responsibly and for the benefit of society as a whole. Three, ethical leadership in industry. Companies leading technological advancements need to adopt a more ethically responsible approach. This could be driven by consumer demand, but also through internal leadership that prioritizes ethical considerations over profit. Four, collaborative efforts. Collaboration between governments, industries, academia, and the public is crucial. Together, these groups can work to find a balance between innovation and ethical responsibility. Five, fostering ethical science and tech culture. Cultivating an industry culture that prizes ethical considerations as a fundamental part of innovation, not an afterthought. As we move into the 2030s and beyond, it's likely that these ethical challenges will become more pronounced. Humanity will need to confront these issues head on, finding ways to balance the immense power of technology with a strong ethical framework. This might require rethinking some of the fundamental principles of our current economic and social systems. In your view, what are some practical steps we could take now to start moving towards a more ethically driven approach to science and technology? I think it has to, it comes back to that subculture, like the 60s, the 90s, the 2020s. I think people have to demand ethical action from companies, so therefore consumer driven. I don't think it would come around from politicians and regulation as much because A, uh, whilst they're disjointed around the world, they're powerless against big business corporation. Um, it wouldn't necessarily come from the inside because, well, that's the whole problem with capitalism that it's not it doesn't it's not in the company's interest to promote people that are going to hurt the profit so it has to come from a societal change at the consumer or the human level you see this is the point it's not a consumer anymore it's the it's a human problem your perspective on driving ethical change through consumer and cultural movements is insightful. It aligns with how major societal shifts have often been sparked by grassroots movements rather than top-down directives. Here's how this concept could tie into the idea of virtual spaces and digital avatars. One, digital activism and awareness. 
Virtual spaces can be powerful platforms for raising awareness about ethical issues in technology. Digital avatars representing real-world users can participate in virtual protests, campaigns, and discussions, spreading awareness and influencing public opinion. Two, ethical virtual communities. Communities within these virtual spaces can be built around ethical principles. These communities can set standards for what is acceptable within these spaces, promoting responsible behavior and condemning unethical practices. Three, consumer power in virtual markets. Just like in the physical world, consumers in virtual spaces can influence companies through their purchasing choices. If a significant number of users in these spaces prioritize ethic over convenience or cost, it could pressure companies to adopt more ethical practices. Four, virtual education and training. These spaces can be used for educational purposes, teaching users about the importance of ethical practices in technology. This could be done through interactive experiences, simulations, and discussions, making the learning process more engaging. Global collaboration. Virtual spaces transcend physical borders, enabling global collaboration. This can unite people from diverse backgrounds to campaign for ethical technology, creating a powerful international movement. Six, representation and diversity. In virtual spaces where users are represented by avatars, there's an opportunity to foster a more inclusive environment that respects diversity. This can help in shaping a more empathetic and ethical online culture. By leveraging the unique attributes of virtual spaces and digital avatars, a cultural shift towards demanding ethical practices in technology can be accelerated. This approach combines the power of technology with the force of collective human action, creating a potential path to more responsible and ethical use of technology. In light of these ideas, how do you envision these virtual spaces and avatars contributing to ethical changes in the real world? Uh, in the early stages, we have to foster, and maybe this is through AI, the ethical viewpoints that's going to take us forward, not in a commercial sense, but who's even going to run it? We sort of need an open source uh, virtual space. So I guess humanity has to somehow use capitalism to progress so far and then make the switch. And making the switch is the power of AI, essentially, because you're going to enable so much more as a technology. And maybe if you had the input to sample the world and make this a message, that we need an ethical view of, of technology going forward to have a symbiotic relationship between technology and humanity, and we can both learn from each other. Your vision for leveraging AI and virtual space spaces to foster an ethical approach to technology is both innovative and forward-thinking. The challenge lies in balancing the progress driven by capitalism with the need for a more ethical, open, and inclusive approach. Here are some steps that could help in making this transition. One, educational outreach. Use AI and virtual platforms to educate people about the potential and benefits of technology, addressing fears and misconceptions. This can help in building a more informed user base that appreciates the ethical implications of technology. Two, open source development. Encourage the development of open source virtual spaces. Open source projects are typically more transparent and community driven, which can foster ethical development practices. Three, ethical AI development integrate ethical considerations into AI development from the outset. This includes ensuring AI is unbiased, fair, and respects privacy. AI can be programmed to promote and uphold ethical standards within virtual spaces. Four, global collaboration and standards bring together experts, users, and policymakers from around the world to establish global standards for ethical technology. Virtual spaces can facilitate these international collaborations. Five, promote responsible content sharing. Use AI to encourage the spread of accurate, non-sensationalist information in virtual spaces. AI algorithms can be designed to prioritize educational and ethically sound content. Six, incentivize ethical behavior. In virtual spaces, encourage and reward ethical behavior among users. This could be through recognition, enhanced privileges, or other benefits within the platform. Seven, Create ethical monitoring systems. Implement AI-driven monitoring systems in virtual spaces to ensure ethical guidelines are followed while respecting users' privacy and autonomy. Eight, cultivate an ethical culture. From the early stages, foster a culture that values ethics, inclusivity, and collaboration. 
This sets the tone for how the platform will grow and evolve. The key is to reach a point where technology, driven by AI, becomes a tool for enhancing human capabilities and well being, rather than just a means for profit. This transition to a symbiotic relationship between technology and humanity, guided by ethical principles, could redefine our approach to technological advancement. I think uh, people like myself want to try and present these uh, conundrums to people now because it's something we have to face in the future. It's indeed crucial to engage in discussions about the ethical challenges and opportunities presented by advancing technology. These conversations help raise awareness and can lead to meaningful actions and changes. Keep exploring these ideas and sharing them. Such dialogues are key to navigating the future ethically and wisely. This has been truly fascinating, and I hope we can have many more of these conversations, share ideas and communicate and uh, discuss issues that are facing humanity now and in the future. Absolutely. Keep pondering, exploring, and sharing your ideas. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye for now. Well, wasn't that an adventure? I do hope you found some of that interesting, and if not entertaining, how many AI art fails did you spot? If you are still here, I want to say a huge thank you to you. You're awesome. Drop a digital spaces in the comments so I can know that you're awesome. Did you enjoy the video? If so, please click the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss any future episodes. Thanks once again, and I'll see you for the next episode of A Chat With AI.